Hey, it's Jake from EXP. And in this video right here, we're gonna go back and revisit one of the old videos we did talking about the pros and cons of living in Spring, Texas after having some conversations with different clients and different people around the country and around the area and on YouTube, like viewers just like you, I've come up with a revised list, best five pros and cons of living in Spring, Texas. I wanna share that with you, so let's get to it right now. Well, my name's Jake Johnston. I'm with the JJ Home Group, brokered by EXP. Realty, and I'm your favorite Houston area realtor. And if I'm not, I probably should be. I want you to know I'm always here and I got your back for anything you might need as it relates to real estate around the greater Houston area. If you're looking to relocate to the area, you're online doing some research, definitely wanna to subscribe to this channel, hit the little bell so you'll be notified anytime we put out a new video. We're constantly updating this channel with great content about exactly what it's like to live in and around the Spring, Texas and greater Houston, Texas area. So reach out to me today or even sooner. It's about putting a great game plan together to accomplish your needs at the highest level. I'm at 281-660-4797. You can comment below, shoot us an email, livinginspringtexas at gmail.com. So we're gonna jump in this video and talk about the top five pros and cons of living in Spring, Texas. I wanna give you the good and the bad give you the best information that way you guys can make the ultimate decision of what is best for you and your family. Full disclosure, I am a Spring, Texas resident. My kids are in the Klein School District. I love this place. It's exactly why we chose to build a life, raise our family and our business right here in Spring, Texas. There's a lot of great things and some bad things. So we're gonna talk a little bit about everything here. All right, so we're gonna kick things off. We're gonna see the good side of the coin and the bad side of the coin. That way you guys can compare and contrast as we run through this list here. So first up, the number one pro about living in Spring, Texas. I believe it's one of the best locations in all of the greater Houston area. Of course, I'm a little biased because I live here, but let me tell you exactly why. You get a great taste of what it's like living out in the suburbs. You've got a little bit of country living mixed in with some of the great conveniences and amenities of modern society and everything you might need from shopping and dining to great schools, great restaurants, and quick access to downtown Houston. And I'm gonna break all this down for you here. We can reference the map so you can get a good view of exactly where we're located. So Spring, Texas is located 35 miles north of downtown Houston, which is awesome because you have access to everything that the metro area has to offer. Professional sports, world-class dining and shopping, and all while having the convenience of living in a sprawling urban and suburban community. So we got the big old city of Houston down south of us, and then just up the road to our north, 13 miles is the Woodlands, Texas, which is the original master plan community in Texas. And it has everything you'd wanna need as well in terms of the Woodlands Mall, the waterway, shopping and dining area, Cynthia Woods Mitchell Pavilion for all your outdoor entertaining concert needs. And all of that's available just to stroll right up Interstate 45. And for those of you that need access to Bush Intercontinental Airport, we're only 15 miles from the airport. You can get there in about 20 or 25 minutes depending on time of day but really easy access compared to some of the other suburbs that might be on the west side of town or south side of town. You don't have to go through downtown Houston to get to the airport. You just jump over on the Hardy Toll Road and it literally drives you straight into the terminals at the airport. And if you are looking for a little bit of a staycation, Galveston and the Texas Gulf Coast is only 75 miles straight down Interstate 45 until you literally dead end into the Gulf of Mexico. Got a lot of friends that have some beach houses and bay houses down along the Galveston coast. It's a lot of fun to go down there for the long weekend or just go get your toes in the sand and enjoy the great Texas sun and get in the water and have a lot of fun. The last thing I wanna talk about real quick in terms of location is that spring in general is a very safe location with regards to flooding. We get a lot of rain. We're gonna talk about the weather here in this video, but I've lived here through Hurricane Harvey, Tropical Storm Imelda, Tax Day Flood, Memorial Day Floods. I've lived through it all right here in spring. We've never come close. The two things you wanna keep an eye on are Cypress Creek drainage area and then the Spring Creek area as well. So keep an eye on those two, but in general, Spring, Texas is very safe and, and high and dry when it comes to the flooding. All right, let's look at the other side of the coin real quick with our number one con, 
we're gonna talk about the traffic and almost continual road construction we see around the greater Houston area. And you might not know this, but Houston has to be world famous and legendary for its traffic. Actually, we are ranked number three in the country and compared to other large metro areas in terms of the amount of time drivers actually spend in their vehicles on their commute to work. The average commuter is gonna spend about 49 hours per year behind the wheel making their way down into Houston for work. And they average on a daily basis about 27 and a half miles of driving. There's also an interesting article that ranks Houston number 22 in the country in terms of having the worst roads and the quality of roads around the greater Houston area. You talk to a lot of people and potholes and different things always kind of come up, but here's the good news. What are we doing to fix the problem? I hate bringing up issues without proposing some type of solution. So I've got a couple for you here. They're always thinking forward about how we can accommodate the growth around the Houston, Texas area. So going forward over the next 10 years, the Department of Transportation has budgeted out over $12 billion to improve the roadways around the greater Houston, Texas area. That's gonna keep us under construction for a long time. But over the long haul, we should definitely see some improvement in terms of the flow of traffic. And they're always creating uh, different roads and trying to make it easier for getting people around the big city. Two other pieces of advice when it comes comes to commute and trying to save your time, make sure you get a toll tag. You wanna to check out um, either hctra.org or Texas tag. Those are the two different toll tags we use around the greater city of Houston. You can use either one, they're interchangeable. The first one being the easy tag and the second one, as I mentioned, is the Texas tag. Grab those, stick them on your windshield because using the toll roads around here is definitely gonna save you some time getting around. The second thing is just plan accordingly. Just know if you're commuting down into town for work, plan ahead, try and get on the road early, beat the traffic, and just know that you're probably gonna bump into a little traffic along the way. It comes with the territory of all the massive growth we've seen around the Houston area. But let's look at that locally. Right here in spring, there's an old saying that you can get anywhere in spring in 15 minutes. I found that to be true. Similarly, plan accordingly, but around the great community of Spring, Texas, pretty easy to get around because anytime you don't have to get on the interstate, it's gonna save you a world of time and a little bit of a headache. All right, let's move on to our number two pro for living in Spring, Texas. I'm gonna talk about something that's majorly important to all of us parents out there. Let's talk about schools because I think our area has some of the best schools and we've got the data to back it up. First off, you need to know Spring is a large area, so we cover 12 zip codes. We also have access to four different public school districts around the Spring area. So depending on where you live, you're gonna fall into one of these school zonings. There's a lot of great information online. Niche.com is a great resource where you can check out uh, and do some research on all the different school districts. Couple school districts I wanna focus on. One is the Klein Independent School District. My kids are in Klein and I absolutely love it. Our superintendent, Dr. Jenny McGowan, is incredible. Her vision for the future of our school district and what she does to protect our kids, to make sure they're getting a quality education. Man, I'm just really excited about the future of Klein ISD because she does a phenomenal job. So tip of the cap to you, Dr. McGowan, you're doing awesome, keep it up for all of us. So to get specific, uh, back in 2021, Klein received the National District of the Year Award, which was huge. We were super excited about that coming off the heels of the coronavirus, where a lot of people were shut down for a while. The adaptation Klein did to um, promote online learning was incredible. So that award was handed out in 2021 because of their innovation with online schooling and then the overall improvement of curriculum as well. So most recently in 2022, um, Klein received a record of seven overall A ratings for the school district of Klein. So they received an overall A rating for the district, an A rating for teachers, college prep, sports, clubs and activities, diversity, and administration. And that's pretty solid for a school district with an average enrollment of over 52,000 kiddos. So secondly, the other biggest school district in spring is the Conroe Independent School District, which covers a lot of the Woodlands and the Rayford Spring area over on the east side of I-45. Couple of big shout outs to Conroe ISD. They were recently rated number two in the state of Texas when compared to the largest 200 school districts in the state when it comes to academics and financial performance. And they also have one of the lowest school district tax in the area, right at about 1.17% of your property taxes that are going back to fund the schools and all their resources available to them. Now they also have an overall A rating on niche.com with an average enrollment of over 64,000 kiddos and seven total high school 
schools that you have access to. So in addition to public schools, Spring has some of the best private school options for your kiddos. So if that's something you're interested in learning more about, jump online. There's a link down here in the comments for privateschoolreviews.com and do some research um, on the Spring area because like I said, there's some of the best private school institutions around the entire greater city of Houston. All right, jumping back across the aisle, we're gonna talk about the number two con about living in Spring, Texas, and really the greater Houston area is our high electric costs. Now, you wouldn't really think this right off the bat thinking that Houston's predominantly an oil and gas economy, but our electric costs over the years have gone up and a lot of people that are moving to the area from out of state, they always seem to comment on that to me that, man, your electricity costs are so expensive. Let me break a couple things down for you. What you need to know about the entire electrical grid in the state of Texas is that it's actually deregulated, meaning that you can go out and shop different providers to come up with the best rate and best term and best overall plan for you and your family's electrical usage. That sounds great, and when prices are low, it's phenomenal for the consumer because you can go out there and pick your plan and, and kind of put these guys against each other and figure out what works best for you. However, on the flip side of that is that it's kind of like the Wild West in terms of choosing these companies. They can all charge different prices, different fees, different cancellation fees, deposits, and all kinds of different things. So it can be a little overwhelming moving in here trying to establish your electrical provider because there's just so many options. I've got a great resource for you. Go online to powertochoose.org, punch in your zip code of your home, and it'll bring up all the electrical providers that service your area. You can compare side by side in terms of rate, fees, deposits, cancellation fees, and everything else right there. Again, it's a little overwhelming, but use that to your advantage and try and come up with what might be the best plan for you and your family. Make sure you look at the uh, cancellation policy as well because a lot of times they'll run a shorter term plan that's kind of dangling the carrot for a little bit lower rate, but make sure you figure out what is the uh, cancellation policy. If you're able to find a different, better deal along the way, how can you get out of that contract to serve your family better? A couple other things that can help you save on electrical expenses. A lot of our neighborhoods around here do have natural gas servicing the community. So a lot of your appliances, your uh, heating bill, things like that are all run off natural gas. I personally installed a backup generator to my home that's powered by natural gas. So one, if the electricity goes out during a storm, we're not gonna miss a beat, we're gonna be up and running. But two, over this past summer, when we saw electrical bills just really go bananas because well, this is Texas, you gotta run the air conditioning to stay cool, it's actually a good idea to flip the electrical power off in the house and let your generator run and do this once or twice a week. It made a massive difference on the overall electrical cost for me and my family. All right, jumping back from the bad to the good, we're gonna talk about the number three pro of why living in Spring, Texas is so great. We're gonna talk specifically about affordability when it comes to real estate and home prices. Your dollar, bottom line, goes a lot further in spring than it does in any other community around the greater Houston area. Believe me, I've run the numbers. There's a couple of charts and graphs I'm gonna share with you that will demonstrate the data behind all of this, but at the end of the day, your dollar goes a lot further in spring Texas than it will anywhere else around the greater Houston area. And with interest rates the way they are today, that can translate literally into hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars for you and your family. So I'm gonna share a couple of graphs with you. The first one, we're comparing spring to some other suburbs around the greater Houston area in terms of average home price. Right now, as of the taping of this video, which is November of 2022, the average price for a single family home in Spring, Texas is $419,500. Now, when you look at the graph, you can see that we are slightly below any of the other suburbs around the greater Houston area, which at the end of the day, I'll take it. And right now in Spring, Texas, at that average price of about 400 to $425,000, We've got about 50 homes for sale. We've seen over the last few months this increase in inventory in our market where we're up 30 to 40% in some areas. So as a home buyer, you've got more choices today than you had six months ago or even a year ago. So your dollar really can go a lot further here in spring than anywhere else. So not only can your dollar go a lot further in spring, Texas, but we've seen that spring has been a great place and a great investment for your money in terms of the long-term appreciation for your home. So we've usually edged around three to 4% appreciation annually. So when the market took off, we saw upwards of 20 to 25% appreciation around spring. Lately, that's cooled off just a little bit, but we're still hovering around eight to 9% annual appreciation on your property values here in spring. So if you're looking for a great place to call home, 
and you're shopping between spring in a couple of different areas, also keep an eye on property taxes. We're gonna jump into that next. And that brings us to our number three con on the list, which is property taxes. So in Texas, the way property taxes work is that the appraisal district for your county will do an annual assessment to come up with what they call your assessed value for property tax purposes. Texas is a non-disclosure state. You don't have to tell a soul what you paid for your home. That price does get recorded into the MLS, but it is not public information, which is great for you because at the end of the day, what we find is that the assessed value for tax purposes usually runs at about 80% or so of market value. Loose figure, rule of thumb, but keep it in mind, the assessed value is usually lower than what you paid for your home, which is great because that's what you're paying taxes on. Once the taxing authority comes up with your assessed value, they then apply your tax rate to that valuation to come up with your annual property taxes. In Spring, Texas, you're gonna see anywhere from 2.5% to 3% property taxes. What's gonna make that vary a little bit usually is the age of your home. We typically find older homes are gonna have lower property taxes and newer construction homes are gonna have higher property taxes. You could see them upwards of 3.3 or 3.5%. The reason that is, is because they had to take out some bond money in order to put the infrastructure into building out the neighborhood. So roads, sewer and water lines, things like that. Um, the good news is, is that as homeowners pay those bonds back, that tax for that infrastructure, which is called a MUD, Municipal Utility District, those tax rates will go down over time. So we do see newer construction neighborhoods at three to three and a half percent over time, could dip down over or under 3% but it is a long-term play. And so keep in mind the age of the home as well as what your property tax rate is going to be. And I got a lot of clients that have moved from out of the area, from California, New York, Illinois, other states. And that's one comment they make is our property taxes here in Texas and in the Houston area are so much higher than what they're used to. But again, we can't talk about all the negative stuff without offering some positive solutions for you guys. So a couple of good things to keep in mind is why our property taxes are higher is because we do not have a state income tax. The majority of our state funding comes from property taxes. You gotta pay the goose. They got, they're the ones that lay the golden eggs. So at the end of the day, that's where our state gets a lot of its funding from is from our property taxes. Not to mention our schools, our hospitals, the Harris County Flood Control District, all of that is a part of our property taxes. As a matter of fact, Texas has seven of the top 12 highest property tax rates in the entire country. But if you're gonna look at all those areas like El Paso, San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, all these areas, Houston is actually the lowest property tax rate out of all the big cities in Texas. A couple other things you can do to offset your tax burdens for your property is file your homestead tax exemption. If the home you purchase is your primary residence, you can file your homestead tax exemption. What that is going to do is lower that assessed value that we talked about, ultimately reducing your total liabilities in terms of property taxes. It's a one-time filing. You can file it the day after you close on your home. That's a recent rule change. It's as easy as getting online. Uh, Harris County, for instance, has a mobile app that you can go on and file your homestead tax. If not, you just print the form, you mail it in with a copy of your driver's license, big key there. Uh, you will need to change the address on your driver's license to reflect the property address. That way it's your primary residence. You file that paperwork with the county. It goes into effect for the following tax year. Then at that point, you will realize the uh, difference on your assessed property tax valuation and save you some money on the property taxes. If you're over 65, you can also file over 65 tax exemption. What that's gonna do is put a freeze on the school tax so that throughout uh, the years, if that school tax rate does increase to create some more revenue for the school district, that won't affect you. Um, so benefit to our folks over 65, you wanna make sure you have those uh, property tax exemptions in place as well. All right, back from the dark side into the light, number four pro about living in Spring, Texas. Really overall, it's just the scene. I love the scene around Spring, Texas. Driving around, you're gonna get a little bit of everything. Some rolling cow pastures, some trees. Uh, Cypress Creek area is a beautiful place as well. But let me tell you about the different things to do we've got because really that's pretty endless. 
for a suburban area, there's a ton of stuff to do. So if you like to get outside, the park and trail systems around here, both along the Cypress Creek Trail System and Spring Creek Trail System are phenomenal. I know Cypress Creek's got over 250 miles of single track and paved trails. If you wanna take a walk, go for a run, or get on the bike and do some cruising, it's a great place to get outside. Spring Creek as well has done a lot of improvements up there by the woodlands. There's a ton of trail systems there. You wanna check out the Jones State Park as well. Um, just a lot of great park and rec areas around the spring area. If you like to get outside and swing the wrenches or get on the golf course, there are 11 different golf courses immediately here in spring. Some of those are semi-private, so you can join a membership. Like for instance, the Glenlock Pines Golf Course has a reciprocal membership with Augusta Pines. There's a new golf course coming with that membership. It'll be their third. That's the Tour 18 golf course that's going in right at Interstate 45 and the Grand Parkway Highway 99. So you do do have the option for private memberships but from a public golf course perspective 11 golf courses around the spring area plenty of places to get out and have some fun and if you like live music endless opportunities for you as well i've mentioned the cynthia woods mitchell pavilion in this video and a lot of other videos in the past we love to go up there at least once a year and catch a show it's an outdoor amphitheater venue that attracts all of the main headliners and big acts all around the country they make sure to stop in houston Great place to see a show, but if you're looking for a more intimate setting, check out the Dosi -Do, Doe, the big barn up in the woodlands on Interstate 45 or Main Street Station over in Tomball. Great little more of an intimate setting to catch a show. So if you've got kiddos and you wanna keep them busy, we've got endless youth activities around spring. Swimming is a huge thing around spring. Both of my girls are swimmers. They're involved not only in the neighborhood community swim team, but also in year round club swimming and swimming for the school district as well. We've got soccer clubs, volleyball clubs. Baseball is another big thing around spring. I've got a lot of friends who have boys that are in baseball and some of the club teams around spring are some of the best. They're always winning championships and getting the big ring on their finger. The kids are loving it, learning a lot about themselves, learning a lot about the sport. Great coaches as well. Gymnastics is another big thing here in Spring, Texas. Simone Biles, our favorite Olympic champion through the USA Team Gymnastics grew up right here and trained in Spring, Texas. My little one's involved in a gymnastics uh, gym right up the road. She loves it, we're up there once a week and her favorite thing is getting on the bars and learning something new every single day. For those of you that wanna get out and do a little bit of shopping and dining, we've got some awesome places here in spring. You don't necessarily have to go down into Houston, into the big city, check out the Vintage Park area or up in the woodlands along the waterway. A lot of great outdoor dining options, great steaks, great seafood, great sushi, and don't forget Tex-Mex and barbecue. You are not gonna find better options anywhere on the planet. Okay, so the number four con on our list here, I'm gonna start talking about the weather because there's actually pros and cons to the weather and I'm gonna start with the cons. Bottom line, it gets hot in the summers. This past summer in 2022 was one of the hottest summers on record we've ever seen. But the good news is that on average, we really only see about 90 days per year over 90 degrees. We also get a ton of rain here around the spring and greater Houston area. Matter of fact, we get some of the most rainfall in the entire country. We average about 51 inches of rain every single year. And to put that into perspective, the national average is about 38 inches a year, which is actually right around what Seattle and some of the areas in the Northwest get. So that does bring into account the hurricane season and the floods and things like that. But like I said, keep an eye on location and flood zones. You should be just fine. Just plan ahead, think a little bit about it. But hey, at the end of the day, you can't have all the cons without a few pros regarding the weather. So our number five pro about Spring Texas is the weather. And let me tell you why. Because once we get through the heat wave of the summer and we get into the fall, October is my favorite month of the year. Because one, we got some of the best weather in the entire country in October. We get the cool weather starts to blow in here. We get the humidity dropping a little bit. Plus we've got football season on and the Astros are always in the playoffs. So you got playoff baseball on, football on. You can turn the TV on outside, watch these games and really enjoy the weather. And then as we roll into the winter season, we've got mild winters. And some of you out there are looking for a reprieve from the Northwest or different areas where you're tired of picking up the snow shovel every year. Trade that in for a pair of flip flops and come on down because we only get 13 days a year below freezing. All right, and that's gonna bring us to our fifth and final con 
for living in Spring, Texas. And look, to be honest with you, it's tough to come up with five cons about the community I live in because I think it's one of the best. But let me tell you, I think the secret is out. Right now, we've got about an average of 250 people every single day moving to the greater Houston area. A lot of them are coming to spring because of the explosive job market that we've seen around here. So it feels like to me, the secret is out. Don't miss the opportunity. If you guys are thinking about moving to the greater Houston area, spring Texas should be high on your list. And if that's the case, reach out to me today or even sooner because I've got your back when it comes to buying or selling or investing in real estate anywhere around the greater Houston area. Hey, thanks for your time. I hope this has been an awesome video for you guys. Click that subscribe button, comment below. Let me know what's important to you. Reach out to me. Let's go out and find a great new place for you guys to call home.